Hello and welcome back to the Locked On Blues podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network and your number one source for daily blues content. I'm Josh Hyman. And I'm Thomas Welch. We got a good episode for you today in that, first of all, you guys can be watching this on YouTube. Finally got into the YouTube channel, so this episode is going live on YouTube. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, Locked On Blues, turn on that notification bell. That way, whenever we upload, you'll get notified. You can see it. You can see our beautiful faces, just like how you listen to us on all your podcast platforms. But we got a good episode today. Uh, prospect tournament has been going on in Michigan. Have been some standouts, including Scott Perunovich. So we're going to be talking about that, as well as Jake Neighbors and a few other names as well. And then on the opposite side of that, Blue signed a few veterans to some PTOs. We're going to talk about those guys, what they could bring to the team, and what it could mean for a potential trade. So don't go anywhere. That's going to be the second half of today's episode. But first... Tommy, what have you liked out of Prospect Camp? What names have impressed you in the tournament? Who do you think has a spot on the Blues based on what they've shown this weekend? Uh, I think the biggest one off the bat has kind of been resounding from uh, Blues analysts and writers and such, but also from national writers uh, have been noticing the play of Scott Perunovich, who's just been kind of tearing it up for the blues. Uh, he had an assist on the first goal of the tournament. He had a three point game, I believe last game, not the Dallas game, but the one in between there. Uh, I forgot who they played, but uh, he's, he's been lighting it up. His skating ability has been far beyond anything that we've seen in the tournament so far. Uh, so that bodes well for the blues moving forward and bodes well uh, for this team at a position that we've talked about on this podcast all off season long. Uh, the blues are in dire need of some help on the defensive side of the puck, it seems like that those top four players and those top two pairings are kind of uh, potentially solidified, but it's really up for grabs kind of who, uh, depending on how Marco Scandella does, will he bounce back this season? How Bertuzzo does, uh, will he bounce back this season? How Jake Wallman does, will he exceed expectations? Uh, Mikola, and of course, obviously, Scotty Perunovich is lighting up the prospect camp right now, and they're expecting him to do so in training camp as well. So it's kind of up for air, uh, kind of up for grabs, kind of see who will solidify those spots, but it's good to see Scotty Too Hotty lighten it up this early. Yeah, absolutely. I think at the beginning of the whole prospect tournament training camp um, situation, uh, we talked about how guys that are going to take that next step show it pretty early on in these tournaments, even though they're not like necessarily indicative of NHL production, you can tell just, just by the eye test of watching these guys of, of who's taken that next step, who is, who's evolved their game from the pace of juniors, the pace of the AHL to the pace of NHL hockey, uh, because it's a huge jump. And you can tell the guys that have that intuition. Now the guys who do, where the game has started to slow down just a little bit more and they make, they make some of these other players look look a little silly out there, and, I, and that's in the best way possible. It's less of an insult to the other players and a con- more of a compliment to the guys that are succeeding. And Scott Perunovich is absolutely one of those guys. He's looked like the best player on the ice in a lot of situations that he's been in uh, and looked like he could fill that question mark of who's going to step up and anchor the bottom half of this Blues defense because uh, ap- apart from the top two guys, like you said, Tommy, it's kind of up in the air how the bottom four is going to turn out. So if Scott Brunovich can step in and establish himself in a solid role, that could be huge for the Blues moving forward. Yeah, exactly. And I think you take other guys into consideration, Torpachenko uh, showing up to camp in the form that he did. We talked about that a couple episodes ago, but dude's got probably the hardest shot on the team. If he's finding the back of the net and staying accurate with it, that bodes well for the Blues prospects moving forward too. Tyler Tucker seems to be uh, kind of the guys at the top of the pack. Uh, he's like right up there, not right up there with Perunovic, because I think Perunovic is kind of in a class of his own. Um, but right below him, like a tier below him, I would put Tyler Tucker right up there with him. So uh, it's another defenseman, big body, big offensive talent. So uh, the Blues could have potentially be looking at two guys in that position uh, come training camp. So uh, it's good. It's always good to have too much of a good thing, right? And yeah, um, absolutely. Like like you're talking about it, it, that's an area where the Blues are scarce right now. So if your prospects are coming up uh, pretty solid in the defensive department, be all right moving forward. Yeah, especially when you consider the fact that defensemen usually uh, develops a lot slower than forwards. 
and the the age curve is a bit different. You know, you typically see defensemen enter the NHL around like 22, 23, at least traditionally. It's been proved wrong lately with a few special cases. But defensemen are typically bloomed later. So the fact that the Blues have two guys on the younger side um, showing out as much as they are at that position uh, is, is huge for them because that's so much time to develop. They could really potentially become core pieces of this organization for the next few years to come. You know, not just talking about this season, but... Um, if Scott Brunovich is really on the path that these small sample size of games have indicated that he's on, he could be a core defenseman with this team for a few years moving forward. And that's something I think that Blues fans should be really excited about. Yeah. And another thing I've kind of noticed uh, with the prospect games, I watched one of them in full and the other ones I've kind of just caught bits and pieces. But uh, the one game that I did see in full, I would, I was convinced that Jake Neighbors and Tyler Tucker, maybe some other guys, were going to get into a full-on fist fight in a prospect tournament. Dang. Which uh, you can kind of, which yeah, you can read into that however you want, and maybe it's not the smartest thing to do right before training camp and get some uh, broken hands or injuries or whatever might happen. But uh, I think there's a fire among these prospects, and like you said, seeing that passion and not being able to turn off just goes to show uh, how much these guys play with their heart and play with emotion Uh, and that's kind of one of the points we hit home on Jake Neighbors when we interviewed him uh, and he said he won't back down from anybody and he certainly wasn't in the first game against Toronto uh, because I was I was pretty convinced he was going to get into a fight he didn't but uh, the overwhelming theme I think for this Blues prospect team in this tournament so far is Scott Perunovic and uh, just scrappy hockey scrappy Blues hockey they're not going to take they're not going to take insults or little the little jabs from anybody they're going to stick up for one another uh and that's kind of how you bond as a group and as a unit and i think uh one of the things that shows how close this unit is is uh, the article that came out today about scott prunovich and jake neighbors uh using their own money funding their way to go down it was a month early that's before crazy. before prospect camp to get some reps in uh get solidified in the city of st louis i think that speaks dividends to the work ethic that some of these kids have specifically those two but I, I feel like that work ethic is contagious, so yeah, uh, should I, seep into the should seep into the veins of the other prospects as well. I do think we should get into that a little bit more, uh, talk about it a little bit more, just go into detail because it is a really interesting story. Um, and like you said, it speaks to the work ethic. But before we get into that, I want to take a minute to tell you guys about fan tracks. Now I know you guys love fantasy hockey because I love fantasy hockey. It's you can continue the season beyond just when the Blues are playing. Uh, it's fun to manage. Fantrax is a free NHL fantasy hockey league manager. It's the most customizable, customizable, easy to use, and feature-rich platform in the industry. You can sign up for free today, and as a special offer for Lockdown Blues fans, you'll be entered to win a official NHL signed Nathan McKinnon jersey. So go to Fantrax.com/lockedon and sign up. The top dynasty fantasy hockey platform in the industry, Fantrax is the most customizable fantasy platform, offering the greatest fantasy experience. For your dynasty keeper, redraft, or even best ball leagues, go deep with the ultimate keeper in dynasty leagues or just create a simple redraft league or even a customizable best ball league with up to 2,000 teams. Coming from another service, Fantrax can import any of your current leagues and customize if needed. So again, sign up for free today and be entered to win an official NHL signed Nathan McKinnon jersey. Simply go to Fantrax.com slash locked on and sign up today. That's Fantrax.com slash locked on. Fan tracks, the home of fantasy sports. Now, you're going to need to follow along with all of these games. And the best way to do that is with direct TV stream. If you're like me, you've got a bunch of different streaming services all over the place. And you got a bunch of different remotes to use. You can never figure out how to put one on. And by the time you figure out how to put the game on, you're, it's halfway through the first period. Well, that problem is no more with direct TV stream. It brings your live TV and on-demand favorites together like never before, so you can watch your favorite sports, movies, and shows all in one place. That means no more juggling remotes and no need to buy another device ever again. And the best part, there's no annual contract, so get rid of the clutter and the confusion. Get your TV together with DirecTV Stream. You can learn more at directtv.com. That's directtv.com. Compatible device required and content varies by package. All right, Tommy. So you talked about uh, Jake Neighbors and Scott Prunovich paying their way to participate in some of the early informal skates that the Blues have. Now, first of all, I just want to put it out there that the Blues are literally not allowed to pay for their prospects to attend these skates. They can't provide any sort of financial compensation. They can't pay for hotels. They can't pay for anything. So it's not like this is a can't believe the Blues wouldn't even support their own players thing. Um, But that being said, it's awesome that despite that, 
um, Jake and Scott both said, Hey, let's, let's, let's go out a few months early. Let's, let's drop a, a little bit of a bag on some hotels, some meals, travel fees, and let's just go skate, get some informal skates. And like you said, it shows the work ethic, you know, these young kids playing, coming in and playing with NHL veterans, um, on their own dime, it's incredibly impressive, and like you said, speaks volumes about the work ethic and the passion of these uh, prospects. Yeah, and from the interview, we know that uh, Jake is a big golfer too, right? So I'm sure uh, mm-hmm. he and Scotty were hitting the links as well and uh, getting a little friendly competition in there too. But I, I can't think of a better way. And they, they said they're living together too, right? Or got their house, whatever so. place they're staying together. So. Um, I can't think of any better way to build team chemistry fast than moving in with a guy uh, before training camp even. So uh, kudos to them for that. Reminds you a lot of like Fabry and Joel Edmondson kind of connection. Uh, Maybe Robert Thomas and Jordan Cairo kind of connection. Maybe even Robert Thomas and like a Chuck Brothers kind of connection. Mm -hmm. Like anytime guys like that live together, uh, they, they, they grow together pretty fast, uh, form a friendship. And I think, uh, that translates directly to the ice. So um, I think that's one of the big reasons that a lot of people, well, I mean, there's a ton of reasons why you would want a Kachuk brother here, but I think one of the one of the big reasons is uh, the established chemistry and friendship with Robert Thomas. Um, and so kind of dipping into that and kind of uh, putting your toes in the water to see what you could do with that as a prospect that hasn't even made the team yet uh, with two dynamic talented players like Scott Perunovic and Jake Neighbors who are could very arguably be one and two prospects in our system right now in terms of forwards. Uh, it's just something you love to see, Josh. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I feel like it's been a little bit. It's been since the Robert Thomas and Jordan Cairo uh, debut that we've really had a prospect to be excited about. Um, you know, that's like two years, so it's not really saying much. But personally, that's my favorite thing about hockey. Um, I will also just- say that the, the attention that – um, Scott Perunovich has gotten from national writers and like prospect writers with the athletic and all that stuff. It reminds me a lot of the hype that was around Robert Thomas. I think and Robert Jordan, Thomas. Don't forget about Jordan Cairo, dude. I saw, I think it was yeah. an athletic article comparing his skating to Connor McDavid's. Right. Like, so there was a, there was a lot of hype around both of those guys. I think, uh, there was a lot more hype consistently and for a longer while, mm-hmm. but I mean, Scott Perunovich, Hobie Baker winner, uh, national titles, national titles with Minnesota. I, I, the dude's got the entire resume and now just kind of backing it up with all of the writers saying this guy looks out of this world. I mean, it's hard not to get excited about the guy. Yeah. Also a chip on his shoulder. Um, was a, was a late, late bloomer draft wise when a full draft literally chip unselected. on his shoulder because yeah. he came off a of surgery. <laughs> uh huh. That's true. But when a full draft didn't get selected, um, before being taken by the blues in the second round and his second year of eligibility. So, um, you know how some, some guys have like all the name of the 10 guys picked before them memorized. Well, he's got the name of the 750 players picked before yeah, him memorized. Yeah. Um, he's got a no, blacklist. No, but like you said, he's got the resume. He's a little undersized, um, which is probably why teams were hesitant to take him early on. Um, when he, when he was a little bit smaller, cause I know he filled out, uh, in the year that he did end up getting drafted, but also, uh, just teams were hesitant. And then, you know, all of a sudden Kale McCarr, Quinn Hughes, all these t- t- defensemen that aren't necessarily traditional mold, you know, big, bulky, shut down defensemen um, come in and, and show teams that you don't really need size necessarily all the time. You can rely on speed and skill. Um, and, you know, if, if Scott Perunovic is 50% of what Kalen Carr has turned into, I, that is the best news uh, Blues fans could ask for with a guy like Scott Perunovic coming, you know, in the second rounds. And everyone everyone doubted him first first draft. No picks, or no, didn't get picked, and then comes around, proves everyone wrong, wins a Hobie Baker, and then hopefully some uh, some other awards. But that's maybe that's a little ambitious. Yeah, I mean that would definitely be a huge win, fifty percent of Kale McCarr. But uh, <laughs> we we were talking about before the podcast, dude, like watching him skate, and maybe it is because the talent gap is so far, and he is skating with prospects that may very well never make an NHL team, but he looks like Kale McCarr skating around out there. And then I get that's a huge comparison and like no one's going to, I mean, it'd be pretty hard to match what Kale McCarr does at the NHL level, but he looks just far beyond the skating level of anyone on the ice, regardless of who it is. Um, And so I think that that explains why the blues were so, I don't know, not easy to move on from Vince Dunn, but I think that's that's a decision that 
they took a lot of things into consideration. I think the skating ability of Scott Perunovic uh, held a lot of water in that conversation because mm -hmm. that was kind of Vince Dunn's biggest thing was like walking that blue line and those stretch passes and the playmaking. Uh, and if you've got a guy at the prospect level that seems like he's already close or possibly at the same level as Vince Dunn uh, in those areas, uh, you can teach a lot of things, but uh, I don't think you can teach hockey IQ. And it Definitely seems not. like Scott Perunovic, Scott Perunovic has it coming out of his ears. Yeah, absolutely. Um, all right. In other news, the Blues did bring in a couple of veterans on some PTOs. And I think Tommy has a little bit of a hot take about what that may mean for the team that he, he dropped the me before the pause. So we're going to be getting into that. But first, want to give a big shout out to one of our longtime sponsors, and that is Built Bar. Did you know that Built Bar has so many delicious flavors? There's something for everyone. We talked to a Built Bar fan. They're definitely passionate about their faith. I know, Tommy, what is that? Was it raspberry brownie? Mm, raspberry right? cheesecake. Raspberry and I just cheesecake. Got a, I get it wrong. I just every got a time. cookie package, actually. Oh. And I'm anxious to try that because yeah, I don't I'm know if you remember during. Uh, the heat of the pandemic, Josh, when we first started doing those big three episodes, but mm. cookie dough is by far my favorite ice cream flavor. So. There you go. There you go. Well, if you don't know the other Bill Bar flavors, well, you're missing out. You got coconut, cherry barcia, raspberry, mint brownie, double chocolate, salted caramel, strawberry, orange, cookies and cream, and German chocolate. And like Tommy said, the occasional limited type flavor. So cookie dough or other limited time flavors that are available. Raspberry all the time. cheesecake. Raspberry cheesecake. <laughs> Not only are Built Bar delicious, they're also healthy. You're getting 17 to 18 grams of protein per bar. Calories ranging from 130 to 180. Only 4 to 5 grams of sugar and only 4 to 5 grams of net carbs. Amazing flavors. All tasty. All healthy. So go to Built.com and use promo code LOCKED15 and you'll get 15% off your order. That's promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at Built.com. And when we come back, we're going to be talking about James Neal, Michael Froelich, and what it could mean for the rest of the guys on the Blues roster. Don't go anywhere. All right, Tommy. I'm gonna I'm gonna give the stage to you because you 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 had me uh, interested with with your thoughts on what these signings might have meant uh, overall. Sort of the deeper meaning. Obviously, James Neal, Michael Froelich, they could have an, a good impact on the team, but that wasn't what this that wasn't what you thought it alluded to. You had you have bigger plans for what this means for the St. Louis Blues. Yeah. So first first of all, if we're gonna go hot take. We'll get to there in a second. But I do think even if like let's say. Neil and Froelich don't even make the team. The impact that they have on these prospects will probably be lasting. So I think uh, any way you chalk this up, it's a win for the Blues Absolutely. because they're they're gonna have uh, their mouths in these very young guys and impressionable young hockey players' ears, telling them what they need to do, telling them what it takes to get to the NHL. Which uh, you can hear that as much as you want from coaches from. Uh, other prospects that have been around the way. But when you hear it from a guy that's actually been to the show and been successful in the show, uh, I think it hits a little bit different. So like I said, that's a dub in that respect. But um, I think personally that you wouldn't bring a guy like James Neal or Furleek in unless you were anticipating them uh, making a push for the roster. Um, and for that reason, I think along with some other things, which would be the, the current cap space of the St. Louis Blues uh, and the pending RFA, that is Robert Thomas. We've talked about it on this podcast time and time again. Robert Thomas is probably one of the centers of the future for this team. Uh, maybe the Blues make some trades and get some younger guys, but when you bring a guy up in your system that's already won a Stanley Cup at such a young age, uh, he has all the passing ability in the world. He's a great skater. He's got a wide lower body. He's hard to knock off the puck. I mean, uh, this guy has essentially everything that you look for in a top six forward. He just has to piece it all together. Um, so we talked about it on this podcast before. I don't think he's going anywhere. The blues are going to have, are going to make it work and they're going to have to make it work to keep him. Uh, but the problem is they don't have a lot of money to make it work right now. So I think bringing in a guy like James Neal, who uh, I don't really know what a contract would look like, but I can't, I wouldn't assume that it'd be like over a million dollars for a leak, maybe in the same conversation. Like they're not going to be making blockbuster amounts of money. No. Um, so if you could trade a guy like Scandella, who I believe is making around three Bertuzzo, who's making around there as well. And then Zach Sanford, who I believe is making around two, any of those guys I feel like would be viable candidates to maybe save some money. Uh, even if it's a million dollars, even if it's like $750,000, that's all money that could go towards the pending contract of Robert Thomas. And it sounds like Robert Thomas 
uh, wants to get around $2 million or close to Jordan Cairo. I believe that's what uh, the numbers they were looking at. And the Blues don't have that right now. So they have to move right. some pieces to make that work. And I think uh, James Neal for a leak could essentially be a part of that. Yeah, uh, I, I think you're right. Um, I, I don't think the Blues are quite done um, finishing up the or making the finishing touches on this roster. I think it's going to look a little bit different from what it looks like right now to start of the season. But I do think Vladimir Tarasenko will be on it. Now, that's obviously a, a interesting name to bring up at the 20-minute mark of the episode because we're definitely wrapping things up here soon. But I, I think it is important to talk about, and we will later on this week, that Vladimir Tarasenko is probably in the future plans of this team, at least for now, um, as you a player. see Strickland's tweet today? Oh, that he's looking real fast. Sharp as ever. Sharp as sharp ever. As ever. Gained, gained 50 pounds of muscle, um, three inches of height, uh, and, and can now shoot righty and lefty. <laughs> Those are always the best training camp tweets. I remember us talking yeah. about that about Jordan Kai, where they're like, I said he put on 15 pounds. I don't know, man. He might break out. And then sure enough, oh. point per game for like half the season. Guy's crazy. It's always <laughs> fun. It's always but, fun speculating and doing yeah. the prospect thing and the same old song and dance when it comes to training camp. But yeah. uh, I'm ready for real hockey to be back. As am I. As am I. And it's right around the corner. And we're going to have it covered for you here on the Locked On Blues podcast. So make sure... You hit that follow or subscribe button on whatever podcast platform you're listening to us on. That way, you never miss a new episode. And hit that subscribe button on YouTube. This episode should be on YouTube, maybe even before it's on uh, streaming services. So keep an eye out for that in the future as well. Process is a little bit quicker. So if you want first access to our episodes with our beautiful faces, subscribe to our YouTube, Locked On Blues. Hit the notification bell. That way, whenever we upload an episode, you can get notified. Follow us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and TikTok at Lockdown Blues. Follow my Twitter at Josh Hyman NHL. Follow Tommy at TWelter15. Thanks so much for listening. And as always, let's go Blues.